But what is going to happen when one day technology fails us, the power goes out and stays out for weeks, months, or maybe a couple of years. We would be out in the dark for a mighty long time. Whether the power outage is caused by terrorists or some unknown natural cause, what are Doomsday Preppers doing to prepare for this? On this episode, we're going to show several ways how to light a house or a bunker from the safest to the most dangerous, from the most cheapest to the most expensive. new threat in America, terrorists are more likely to blow up the power grid and put us out in the dark for a very long time. It could be months or it could even be years. Propane lanterns are very nice to have. They're very bright. They use up a lot of fuel in a short time. Not recommended for long-term use. They are perfect for going outside in the dark in the woods to light up a dark area. This is the fuel those lanterns use. It's propane. They burn about nine hours on one tank. Candles. They are cheap to buy, but burn very fast. And buying them for long-term power outage is very expensive. They can be very dangerous, too, if not handled properly. They fall over on the floor. They start a fire. They're very nice to look at in the dark. They smell nice. But they're now recommended for long-term doomsday. Gas generators, portable generators, are nice to have. They are very noisy. They can be very dangerous if they're too close to the house or to the bunker. They put out carbon monoxide. They are expensive to fuel up, but they are very good for short-term power outages, like maybe for one or two weeks at the most, maybe a couple days. A kerosene lantern is the most cheapest way to light a house up or a bunker up in a doomsday event. One of these will burn about one pint of fuel every 24 hours. So one pint will probably last doomsday prepper three full nights, if they're burning them eight hours a night. If they're dropped, they will cause a fire. They must be properly secured under something or hanged on a ceiling, secured where they will not fall down. Portable, battery-operated camping lanterns are the most safest way to light up a house or a bunker. They're good for long-term. They're good for short-term use. They run off of four AA batteries, so they could be quite expensive to operate. They pose no fire hazard, no safety hazard. If dropped, they will not catch fire. Worst case scenario, they will break. Having one of these lanterns, a doomsday prepper can easily stock up on a bunch of batteries that are one-time single-use batteries. When they go dead, just throw them away. Or they could buy rechargeable batteries with a solar charger, which is right here in the hands of this doomsday prepper right here. It holds four AA batteries. Inside the case, they can be seen one, two, three, four. Hang them on the window inside the house or, or in a bunker or outside facing the southwest. On a nice sunny day, between 8 to 10 hours, the batteries will be fully charged after completely discharged. Very safe, very efficient, and this is the most cheapest way to go for lighting. Solar power is the most best way to go, most safest for any kind of lighting. These are two lawnmower batteries right here hooked up to a solar power and there's a power inverter hooked up to the batteries to power a 110 volt light bulb. Deep cycle marine batteries are recommended for solar lighting. Lawnmower batteries are not meant for lighting. These batteries right here are just cheap and this prepper started off prepping on a small cheap budget. He's eventually going to upgrade to marine batteries. There is a power inverter that's connected to the batteries. Power inverter converts the 12 volts to 110 volts AC with the flip of a switch.
power inverter and batteries are powering a fluorescent light bulb. This is a fluorescent light bulb. These light bulbs are very energy efficient, and this is the way to go when solar powering a house or a bunker.